So we have talked about different sorting techniques. We have talked about bubble sort and selection sort. In this video, we'll talk about insertion sort. So what you do in this technique is basically you take the elements and then you put the elements at the right position. That is your insertion. So you have to put at the right location. Now in this, you don't normally do swapping. Yes, we do swapping, but we don't use word swapping. What you use is something called shifting. Okay. So example, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing cards, so if you, if you have a random cards on your table, so basically in this example, we are not going to use cards. We are going to use this uh, characters. I, I found these characters in my, uh, in my drawer. I think I got it for my kid's birthday, but it doesn't matter. So I got this and we'll try to sort these values here. So let's say if you randomly get these values and if you want to sort them, uh, what you do is you pick up the value and then you, you know, imagine these are cards, playing cards. So what you do is you take the first value, you take the second value, and then you keep it like this. I don't know if how many of you play cards. I used to love them, not for money, uh, but I used to love them. Then you take a next card and then you put it before this. Then you take a card, then you know that this card goes between A and O, you put it here. So this is called insertion. But how exactly you're going to do that? That we'll see with the example on this table and with this, with these cards. So now let's sort these values. Now these are not values, but characters. So let's try. So what we have here is we'll start with the first location. As you can see on the screen, we have different values here and I'll pull this down a bit so that we can have some place to keep this. So the first value is O. Now I'm assuming the, the O goes here, the first location because it's always sorted. And then you take the next value, which is E, let's say. Now we know that E comes before O. So what we need to do is, this need to go at the start. So you have to move this to the next location so that you will have some space for E. Now, the point to remember here is it's all about shifting, okay? So we, we don't use a word swapping here. Uh, you will understand that in some time, why don't we say swapping? Uh, let's go for the next one, which is S. Now we know that S is greater than, so we'll compare S with all the values. So we'll compare S with E. Okay, it goes after that, it goes after O, so S goes here. Okay, I'm not promoting any camera model here, but <laughs> that's the sequence. Then you go for the next one, which is D. Now D goes at the start. So what you do is, you basically have to move all the elements, right? So if you compare with S here, D is uh, less than S, so you compare, so you have to shift S, you have to make some space for D. Then you take O and you move O here so that you can make some space for D. Then you compare D with E and you have to make some space. Of course, you have to swap, you have to move this. You will make some space for D and D goes here, right? So now it is in sequence. Then what about the last value, which is A? Now A, we all know we have to, I mean, it, of course it goes at the start, but we have to compare from start or last. So this goes here, which is S, if it is less than that, we'll shift this to make space for A. But then we have to also check with O. This also have to shift, we check with E. This also have to check, shift, we compare with D. This also has to shift and then A goes at the start. By doing this, what you're doing is you're basically inserting value at their location. So this is how you do the insertion sort. Now let's say this was the randomly we were picking values, right? But what if, you have things already in the array. So what we'll do is we'll keep it here. We'll keep this here, we'll keep this here, this goes here, and let's say this goes here. In fact, I will also move this. Okay, I'm not trying to make any city name, but let's say we have this sequence, we have these five values, and now you want to sort them. So what you do is, you don't start from the first value, you start with the second value. And then, because we are assuming that the first value is already sorted, okay? So what you do in this technique is, basically you divide your list or array into two segments, the sorted and unsorted. At this point, all are unsorted. Oh, so this is unsorted array. But when you start, you have to assume that your S is already sorted. Then you start with E. Then you see, hey, do, do we have E at the right position? The way you do that is you compare E with S. And, this, and you say, hey, you know, E is not at the right position. So you will take E out. Uh, in programming, you, what you do is you save the value of E in the temporary location, okay? So exactly you're not moving E, you're just making a copy of it. Maybe there will be a copy of E here as well, but you have extra copy with you, saved in a temporary variable. So let's say this is a temporary space. 
Then you move your S here so that you can make space for E and that's sorted now. Now if you see this too, it looks sorted. Now what you do is you check E before do we have any value. So of course we don't have any value before E. Now that is sorted. Then you go for the next value. So we started here. In the next iteration, you basically start with O. Now O will compare with the previous value, which is S. Now is it the right position? No. So we have to copy O in the temporary variable and move your S so that you can make some space for O. And O, of course you can move O here. You have to also check if O really goes here. You have to compare O with the previous value, which is E. And we know that O is greater than E, so you can keep O here. So that's how you basically sorted the third element. Then you go for the next element, which is D. So what you do is you compare D with S here. And then you know that D is smaller than S or S is greater than D. So what you do is you have to move. So you take into temporary variable, move S here. Of course, you don't move D directly there. You have to compare D with the other, other elements, which is O. Is it smaller than that? Yes. We have to move this here. We have to make space for D, right? Again, the for, before that also we have one more element which is E. So you move E here. It's all about shifting values. And then your D goes here. And if you compare, uh, it, it looks sorted, right? Compared to the other, other values. So it looks sorted. But then we have to complete one more iteration. So you take A, you compare A with S. Now A here is compared with S. So again, we have to shift. So what you do is you take A in the temporary location. Then you move your S. You will check A with O, again you have to move O. Then you check A with E, again you have to move E. So remember, you have to only move when you know that A will not be at the right position. And then you compare A with D, again D has to move so that you can make some space with for A. So this is how basically you do this sorting technique. Now question arises: how will you do in programming? So what you need is you need two loops, one for the number of passes you are doing, right, moving from different element and you need a inner loop which will responsible to find the key and uh, shift the values. And also you need a temporary variable so that you can store it somewhere. So you have to, you need a key which will go into a temporary variable on something. Now how do we do this? That's implement in the code.